started probably when I was a child and used to sing in my bedroom to records and that continued into teenage years and to adulthood um, but very much behind closed doors so it wasn't something that I shared with people but then when I met Marg she started to encourage me to take lessons but I refused and then as we were coming up to my 50th birthday party, so towards the end of 2008, um, I finally relented and we sought out a local music teacher. I worked with her for six months and then at my 50th we had a big party and I performed with a band in front of a hundred unsuspecting friends and family. What did that feel like, performing live? Terrifying. <laughs> After the party, I carried on having lessons and attended a few open mics, did a bit of performing locally. But in early 2011, I started to experience quite a number of different health issues, which uh, sort of um, increased in severity and regularity until towards the end of in November of 2011, I was told that I'd got ME. So my short-lived musical or singing career, at least, came to an abrupt halt, as with most other things in my life. One of the things that I was encouraged to do um, as part of to, to start my recovery from ME was to journal. So ME is a physical illness, but it's also neurological, so it affects you psychologically and emotionally. And so to help with that side of things, one of the things I was encouraged to do was, was diarise stuff, my thoughts, my feelings. That was a very positive thing and very helpful, but also I found that I was starting to effectively write little bits of poetry and because of my love for music, um, quite naturally, I found that I was also coming up with little tunes and melodies to go with some of the words that I was writing down. Soaking. Soaking all the blues away Let back drift away Get to dreaming I'd recognised that there perhaps was something in this that I could maybe turn them into an EP or record them in some shape or form. I met up with a local musician and producer who listened to some of the covers that I'd recorded and also listened to some of the material of my own that I was working on. And he gave me one very simple but very clear good piece of advice and that was to go away and find a good arranger. I just automatically thought about one person, Jeanette Mason. The stuff that I was writing was not, strictly speaking, jazz. I knew that Jeanette was far more versatile than just being, just being a, a jazz pianist, a jazz musician. I was concerned that I was just batting way out of my league, and I in many ways was. I think with Emmy, yes, a lot of things in my life had to come to a stop, including my short-lived singing career, such as it was. I can't look back at what-ifs, um, but I can look back at what has come out of this and what I've managed to achieve. It has just been the most extraordinary adventure and I hope 
that adventure will continue in some shape or form.